introduce our host. Please stand by. Can everybody hear me? Testing? I'm all ready, Kathy, whenever you are. We can hear you, Melissa. And everybody, please put your hands together and welcome our host today, Melissa Arma with StockSwish.com. Melissa, take it away. <coughs> Hello there, everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. Can everybody see my slide? Welcome, my name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk about earning $1,000 a day trading only 30 minutes a day. So for those of you that don't know what I do, I focus on stocks that are gapping and that is what we're going to talk about today. Now you can use my system to do options trades, but if you're going to be focusing on you know, getting in and out quickly um, in 30 minutes, you really have to watch your options trades if you're gonna get down and out quick. But mostly, I like to do day trades, taking the equity position. And if any of you are not sure about day trading or what day trading is, uh, feel free to type in the box there and ask me questions as we go along today. And it's an exciting uh, time to be trading, actually, because I think 2018 is gonna be a very volatile year in the market. Today was no exception since the beginning of the year. It's very, been very interesting. If we have some time here at the end today, we will take a look at the market and some stocks that are gapping tonight. If you have more questions, you can email me at melissa@thestockswish.com or give me a call at 929-3200-GAP. And I encourage all of you to go and follow me on YouTube under Stock Squish, Swoosh because I have a lot of videos there. So I usually tape record webinars, plays of the day. Sometimes I tape the room and you can go and listen to videos there. So what's the point of day trading at all. I mean, why even do this thing? Uh, which can be very fun, you know, if you have a really good day, or sometimes can be stressful if you have a tricky day trading. What's the point, though, to any of it? It means you're doing it to make money, and particularly, I think, to make money quickly, which is what we're going to talk about today. So what's the point of learning a trading system, though, if you've learned one in the past and failed to make money? which you know a lot of people have. I've had the business now for more than five years and I've talked to many people all over the world. And I have taught, I think, two people that never traded in their life before they met me. But for the most part, all the people I've ever taught have taken classes and some of them have learned how to trade certain strategies. Some of them have not learned anything at all. But what if you did take a class? What if you didn't learn anything from it? What if the system that you learned didn't work? Okay, and the, what you need to really look at is if the system you learned didn't work, what was the foundation? Okay, which is what we're going to talk about here at the beginning before we get into the trades. What was the foundation for the system? What's the point of taking a class to learn a system if you cannot devote yourself full time to trading yet? So, say you're busy, you've got another job, you've got a family, all right, or you work part time certain hours. The idea is that you would be focusing on a set time, which you would have to have available in your schedule between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. That is a time that I'm focusing on, I'd say, 90% of my trades. It's not to say I don't take trades outside of that time period. Occasionally, I will do an afternoon trade. But I'd say 90% of the trades that I take in any calendar year are between 9.30 and 10. So you've really got to start somewhere if you want to get serious about doing this. And I think January is a great time to start new projects, new things whether it's you know trading, whether it's a new career, whether it's an exercise program, whatever. January is a good time to set New Year's resolutions and start new things. And the sooner you start, the sooner you'll be able to move ahead to achieve your goals. Because if your goal is to have a certain income by the end of the calendar year 2018, well, you've got you know not quite 12 months left, but you've got enough time that you can still achieve your goals. So what I was saying earlier is very, very important. When you trade, you've got to focus on the foundation. The foundation for me is what? What do I mean? I mean a strategy. So you've got to have a foundation to trade. Why are you doing it? Give me a reason. A reason that you can talk in layman's terms, not in trader terms. You need an infrastructure for every entry, and it really is the strategy. The strategy is a core reason behind why you would even ever be watching any stock in the first place or even contemplating any trade to take in it. 
An entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade is a foundation for supporting it. And this is a side note. A lot of people believe that buying support and shorting resistance is a strategy. It is not. And many support buys and many resistance shorts don't work and fail. Some work, some don't. But many fail. Why? Because there isn't a foundation supporting it. And that's why some do work. Some do work because they have the foundation. And some fail because they don't. So this, the strategy is the important part. All right? The fact is that many stocks, and this is true, on any given day, have absolutely no strategy to trade as a day trade. And remember, that's what we're focusing on here today, day trading. All right? And day trading between 9.30 and 10. So many stocks really are untrainable on the day. And that's why on most days, stocks don't have a proper entry. It's great to say, well, I can go long and anything that's bullish or short and anything that's bearish. No, you can't. You cannot consistently make money as a day trader, even trend trading something as a day trade, okay? A day trade means you got to get in and out before 4 o'clock. And that means you're taking the entry after 9.30 and you're getting out before 4, okay? That's the time the market is open, 9.30 to 4. So you've got to have a strategy because on many days, there's nothing to do with many, many stocks. And that's how you're going to be successful with the strategy, the foundation. This is an interesting little picture here, this little you know, house or shack basically on this raft here. It doesn't look like much. It looks like one big wind, this thing could blow away. And definitely any kind of big thunderstorm, this thing would go to pieces. <clears throat> you don't want to live in this shack, okay? So you don't want to take trades with a crappy foundation. There's no foundation here. It's floating in the water, and it's got absolutely no even sides here. So what is the strategy to my trading? If you decided you wanted to come and learn what I do and, and do the trades that I call in the room, what would you be looking for? Why? The strategy I do is gaps. And if you've never heard of the gap before, I'm going to go over this. And if you have, I still want you to listen. So gaps are a strategy or foundation for your trades in the market. When you choose to take a trade, there has to be a support system behind why you're taking the trade, which remember I just said is the reason. The reason gives you the conviction. Gaps are the support system or reason why you would enter a position or why you wouldn't enter a position, why maybe you wouldn't do anything at all, okay? The reason you're choosing to enter a stock or the foundation for your entry should be because the stock is a quality gap. Now, what do I mean by quality? Well, there's many stocks that gap on any given day, but not all of them are good to trade. Not all gaps are created equal. I say this all the time in the trading room, actually. So what is a gap in day trading? This is a very basic definition. A stock gap. So in the opening price today, which would be at 9.30, okay, or 9.30 tomorrow, for example, a stock gap from the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. So a gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next simple okay now what is complex about it it's finding stocks to gap that are predictable or playable meaning that you can predict the next direction that the gap will go that the stock will go in the day again between 9 30 and 4 that you could make money in the trade so what is a gap this is a daily chart it's a daily chart chart of gme this is what a gap is this chart closed Thursday night, around, I don't know, 19-something here. Boom, Friday morning, gap down. Stock had earnings, gap down, opened around 1850-ish. So the stock closed at one price, opened at a different price. So that's all that a gap is. Now what you have to do, so the foundation is what? Oh, the stock is gapping. So you got that part down. Now you have to figure out if it's a good one. And you got to figure out which way you're going to do it. Are you going to do it down or is it going to rally up? Okay. In the case of GME, it was short. Open, boom, dropped. Had a really nice move in the day. Actually, this continued today too. Lower, <clears throat> this was a short on Friday and it was a short today as well. I'll show you the chart from today's a little bit later. Anyways, the system that I use to find stocks like GME is a system that I created myself. It is a checklist. I just go through in the morning. Boom, boom, boom. And I have a 26-point checklist I go through, and I rate each stock that I might want to trade. 
So I usually rate as many things as I can find that I like. Might be one, might be two, might be five, might be 10. Earnings season officially starts this week. Actually, Goldman Sachs has earnings out tomorrow morning. So bottom line is that there's gonna be lots and lots and lots of things to rate in the next eight weeks, 10 weeks with earnings season. But on any given day, there's always stocks that are gapping, but I qualify them. I look for the good ones and I use a checklist in the morning. So this is what I do. So the foundation is the gap and then the system I created tells me what the good ones are, okay? And any questions, just write it in the room. So there's reasons to trade, which is what? You wanna make money. Another reason you might wanna trade is what? Because you wanna make money fast, you don't have a lot of time to devote to, to trading the market, to watching something all day long, okay, on bigger time frames. But for, for you, if you're looking to trade and you're trying to find a system, what might be some reasons you'd want to learn my system? If you wanna trade in the first 30 minutes of the day, you wanna get something called the money move, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. If you want to make a substantial amount of money with a controlled amount of risk, what do I mean by that? I use hard stops when I take a trade. I put the stop in. So my risk of my loss, of my potential loss is fixed. I can't lose any more than what I have the stop at. So if I take a trade, say for example, and I risk a thousand bucks and I put the stop there, if this trade stops out, what am I going to lose? A thousand bucks. And even with slippage, it's really not that much difference. But usually I get filled with the number. So that's what I call a controlled amount of risk. Okay. If you want to make consistent money, you learn my system because I'm very consistent. If you want to take good risk to reward trades, what does that mean? Some trades go to the first target, which would be one risk unit profit, meaning if you'd risk a 500 bucks, you'd make 500 bucks. That's what you're looking to do. Flip your money around once every day. And if it goes farther, you could make more, two, three. But your goal every day, you have to have a set goal of whatever you're risking. And also, if you want to learn a proven strategy. So I've been using my method. Now, I've been trading for 10 years, but I've been using my method teaching people for five years. Personally, it took me three years to figure out my entire system of the 26 points. So I've been doing this successfully for a little bit more than seven years. And if you're already a trader and you need a strategy that makes you consistent and fast profits, you could follow me daily in the trading room. And many people ask me about the trading room, you must take my class to join the live room because I think it's important to know what to do to be successful yourself, simply because I'm not there taking the trades for you. So you gotta learn it. And they do set up, like I said, in a very fast time frame. But the benefit of that is you're getting the move quick and you're getting out quick. And once you learn how to do it, it just becomes second nature. So it's really not hard once you get used to seeing the setups. And also, why would you learn my system, again, your time is limited and you want to make money in the market. Any questions so far here? So uh, bottom line is I don't like to work that hard on the trades. I feel like the harder I work, actually the days that I take more trades, the, the worse it se I seem to do. And, and and I'm not saying I don't have bad days in a calendar year. Sometimes I do, but it's funny. Every time I look back on my day, every time I look back and I have the biggest days I ever had, I did one trade. And the worst days I ever had, I did too many trades. I'm telling you, over trading kills so many people with their trades. And I, you know, it's just one of these things where it's, it's uh, almost, it's like the opposite almost of many, many other careers where less is more. Meaning the, the less amount of time you work usually in trading, the more money you make. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'll show you some of the charts in here to see. It's almost like the things just go right away or they don't. In that time frame, in that 9, 30, 10 time frame, it's like they either go or they don't. And, and it's, just, it's just true. It's just the way the market acts. It's just the way that, that, that stocks trade. And I'm going to explain why about that in a minute. But anyways, going back to the GME from Friday, uh, there were no, no good shorts today that gapped down. So this was the last good short. For those of you that don't know me, I like to focus on shorts. So anyways, GME was all here in the pre-market. So I, this is a pre-market chart, and all the work that I do prepping for the morning is done before the open. So here you see this big bar here. It's 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then you have the open here of the day, right here in this bar. So all of this going on here in the pre-market, I'm figuring out what to do. 
So you can sit down at your desk at 8.30, 8.45, 9 o'clock. You've got to get ready before the open. And I'm reading the gap, just looking at these, these bars here. Just looking at those candlesticks. I'm determining if this is good or not to shorten the day. And that's all you need. And I go through the checklist and do it. So it's not a whole lot of prep time. I, I like to give myself at least an hour, but if, if you've got to give yourself 30 minutes, but still, I'm figuring it out, all my work, all the prep work is done before the open, which many people find stressful. But really, if you know what to watch, it's not stressful, all right? And here was the drop that happened here on Friday, and you can see this was today. Uh, the stock continued down today. <clears throat> Any questions, you can just write in the room. I see some more people signing in. So anyways, the bottom line is, if you can make $1,000 a day trading in just a half an hour a day, sometimes in a few minutes, it's really worthwhile to do this as a career. It doesn't mean that trading, day trading, doesn't have its challenges. Any career has its challenges. You know, sometimes you really got to put the pedal to the metal. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is, chart reading, uh, sizing your trades, whatever. I think every problem that any person has ever had trading can be overcome if you put the pedal to the metal. If you say, I'm going to do this. I am determined to get this right. I am determined to have a successful week, a successful month, a successful year, whatever. You have to be extremely determined. I tell you, you know, I, I, it's easy to say now, I was telling you that I've been trading for 10 years, but when I started out, I did not know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing at all, okay? And I figured out the system on my own, and I lost money and made money over the process of doing it until I figured it out. So overall, I was losing at the beginning, back and forth. But I was extremely determined to, that I could do this and that I could figure it out. And in the end, it was worth it because of the time, the time to do it. And my previous career was doing mortgages, and I used to work seven days a week and you know 60 hours a week, and it just was exhausting. And the best thing about day trading gaps, which is what I really, really only do, anything I do, whether it's an option trade, whether it's a day trade, anything is gap related that I choose, the best thing about it is the fact that you do not have to work more than five days a week and you do not have to work for hours and hours a day. That is the best thing about it. And I'm, I've been appearing on television. I could not do that. I could not do this, this dream that I have to be on TV if I was trading all day long. I wouldn't be able to do it. So it allows you to do other things with your life. And whether that's another career that you love or a dream that you have or spending time with your family or just going golfing, it's the idea that you have more time to yourself. So you're scrunching it in, that period, all your energy, you're putting it into that half an hour. And I always say you can be perfect for half an hour a day. You can't be paid for perfect probably for six and a half hours but you can be perfect for 30 minutes, all right? Anyways, it's a good career, even if you wanna do it on the side, it's just money coming in extra month, but you gotta learn it and do it. It's a process, it's like your brain over and over and over again. Last week I saw on Thursday morning, which we'll go over the market chart, I saw the market would continue straight up till it got to the next huge big number, which it did. And the reason that I saw that is what? My brain has been conditioned trading nothing but gaps for now 10 years. So once you get something down, once you really learn it, it becomes you know, conditioned in your brain. Our brains are these magical, wonderful, amazing things, okay? We, we, once we get used to doing something, it's like a habit, and we don't even have to think, it's, we just function. Like if you rode a bike, or if you play an instrument, a musical instrument's probably a great example. Uh, you know, I used to play the piano. I don't have the piano in my apartment in New York, and I haven't played the piano in years, but I'm sure I could sit down and read music and play the piano. Now, I may be a little rusty, okay, because I haven't played in a long time, but I'm sure that I could still do it because I remember. But if I'd been practicing every day for the last five years, I'd be really, really good, which I haven't. But it's the idea that once you learn something, you get better and better the more you do it. And music is a good example, and whether it's piano or something else, playing guitar, uh, when you play musical instruments, very often we're singing. You know, people that sing a lot when you read music and you just hear it. You just have an ear for it. You can you you get the notes. Any questions so far here by anyone? Anyways, here is the market. This is not how we closed today. This was a move we were having in the afternoon. But if you've been thinking about trading the market, what are you going to do? You gotta have a strategy. This was a chart of the SPY. We had a huge bullish move here since the beginning of the year. This is 2018. 
We just gapped up and ran like the Dickens, blew out every number, Dow today went over 26,000, and the market's just extremely strong, all right? You've got to know what to do. Whether you go long or short in this market, which is very, very bullish, you still have to have a strategy and you still have to have the foundation to make money, okay? That strategy is going to tell you what to do and when to do it. And I really think that focusing on one pick per day is the key. Like I said, though, there's going to be a lot of things to watch in earnings season, but, you know, it's hard some days. You know, I want to look at a couple different things, but I think the best thing, the most success is one thing, one thing, one thing. So like I was saying, what's a strategy I do? It's gaps. They are a very specialized strategy. And many, many t people teach something called a gap fill. That's not something that I do. And to be honest with you, it does not consistently work, consistently in a predictable way. So what I do consistently works in a predictable way. That does not mean that every trade that I ever take works. It means that more work than don't, all right? If you want to make money in the market, you need to think and act like a true professional. And by the way, professionals are aware of the fact that everything they do is a controlled risk. Not every trade is going to work, but they believe in the trades that do. They would call something like the market last week and believe in it and hold through the move, even if it seems impossible, which it did when I called the market higher on Thursday. It, you've got to think like a professional person where you're taking it seriously, even if you're risking 100 bucks a trade. We're talking about making $1,000 a day. How much would you have to risk to make that to hit those goals? $1,000, because I just got done telling you normal risk units, you want to flip it over once. But even if you can't afford to risk $1,000 a day, even if you don't even feel comfortable with that initially, the idea is you would take it so seriously as if you would. Because if you want to get to that, if that's your goal, even if it's 50 bucks, you have to take that $50 you're risking very, very seriously, all right? And professionals have strategies. They have a foundation for taking the trade. They don't trade willy-nilly, all right? Pretend you were running a hedge fund. You would not take, you know, 2 million shares or whatever of a spider short to, overnight tonight. That would be a, an insane trade and dumb to do because the market's still strong and higher, even though we fell today. You have to think like you're trading with this huge, massive amount of money if you really want to make a lot of money. So focus on one strategy, be effective, be efficient with what you do. I said earlier I use stops, and that's to protect myself. And it's important also to know where your targets are, where you're getting out. And I really think that the only way to consistently make money day trading is to focus on something called the money move, which happens in a set time period in gaps in the morning. And the reason that period of time is so critical is because it's when institutions, institutions like hedge funds, uh, you know, big, big banks, big professional traders are putting positions on and off, on and off. So that is a critical time of the day to watch. And that is something that I do very well, which is playing that period in the morning. Most day traders will wait till after 10 a.m. to take trades, but I am usually in and out by 10. Now, what do I mean by the money move? This was SVU. This was a gap last week. It was Wednesday. The money move happens, what, between 9.30 and 10. Stock open here, dropped, boom, you get the move. Here it is, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, dropped into where here, 10 o'clock. If you shorted the stock in here, which gapped down, how do I know it gapped down? Look at a chart, it's a one minute chart. Stock closed up here the night before around what, 1960-ish, boom, gap down in the morning here around 1880. You get up in the morning, you can't see the stuff here because I didn't put the pre-market data, but it's, there's bars here, there's trades that are going off. Do, do, do. There was trades that were going up here in the morning and you figure it out, oh, this looks like a good one. You go through the checklist, you rate it. Looks like a good what? Short. You watch it in the morning, here you get the drop. Here you get the drop, okay? So this was a beautiful move that happened. I call it the money move between 9.30 and 10 in a gap. It was a $1.80 drop. And you only need to get a piece of that any day. Just a, just a little bit of it. You don't even need to get the whole thing. Half of that will do you on any given day, 90 cents. And I'm using this here because I want to show you how you can use this for options too. This is an option trade in Amazon I called last week, all right? I called it on Thursday, stock ran up. Friday, again, time of the day here, 9.30. Where did it run up here? 9.45. And if you held it into 10, went up a little bit more. Do you see this? This is a long. 
I, I it's better to do that. You could have day traded this, but it's just crazy expensive. But it, you know, really, it was a an option trade to day trade. You'd buy the calls and you get in, boom, you get the move. Buy it, get out. Get in, get out. Do it as a day trade. Look at the time of the day. So you see here, institutions are buying it, and institutions here are selling this or shorting it or both. <coughs> But you got to see what the stock is doing in the gap, which is the foundation, to know it's going to have a big move like this for you to capture it. And that is what I do. So this is a 20-point move, and that's a big move to have in 20 minutes, even in a stock like Amazon. All right? A little bit less than 20% of the price at that point. We were back last week on Friday. And I called, actually, I called this Thursday. I called the 1300 strike in Amazon, so this is an option that expired last Friday. You could have done it, or this Friday, you could have done it for the Friday ones for last Friday, though, if you're going to get in and out Thursday and in and out Friday, because it ran well over through the strike, okay? So, again, you could day trade options, too. Different way to take the trade. You don't need the buying power margin, so in some respects, it's cheaper as far as that of opening an account and not having to worry about margin. But I really focus mostly on equity trades like this, where you would have to have an, an active day trading account. That's just you know my thing. But you can do both, and I wanna point that out for people who always ask me about margin. How much buying power do you need? Because you really don't need any more than the cost of the position and to open an option account to take a trade like this. It was a huge trade. So again, how are you going to find the gaps to trade? You're going to rate them. You're going to use a system. You can scan them in the morning. Where do you scan for gaps? You can scan for them lots of places. Here's some free sites. There. Oh, I don't know why that did that. You can go right on here. You can pull up the earnings list. It'll give you earnings out for the next week, the next couple weeks. Or you can go here to this site. And again, these are free. <coughs> which you will get lists of earnings, nighttime in the morning. Now, you can pay for a scanner if you want. I don't think that's necessary. If you want to, it's usually overlap, all right? But it's up to you. But those are free sites if you want to go to it. And here's another nice free site. Data is not live. It's, it's close. It's a little bit delayed, but they have nice charts, freestockcharts.com. Um, you can make the charts on there kind of look like mine if you want. All right, so there are some tips. Now, getting back to what I was saying, how do you know which gap to trade? Say you go into Yahoo, you're looking, you find all these gaps, how do you know which one to do? There's hundreds, thousands in a day. You need a proven system to find the best gap. And I prefer to focus on shorts first. So not only am I focusing on gaps, I'm also focusing on one side directional bias usually first. So if I don't see any shorts, then I'll look for longs. That's how I lay my morning out. First, I go to the shorts. If there's no shorts, then I go to the longs, okay? That's what I do. So I focus on something called the Golden Gap System, which I created. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. I do have a bullish gap rating system. It's not the same, but I first focus on the bearish ones. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist, and that is what I do. It's been 10 years now. I don't skip it. I don't cheat it. I don't roll out of bed and trade. I never take a trade in anything that I haven't rated. I can rate something probably within seconds because I've been doing it so long. I could rate gaps in my sleep, but I still take the time to sit down in the morning and do it. And that's why I like to prep. In my mind, if I see and I have 100% conviction that I like something, it really helps me take the risk because $1,000, you know, is still a good amount of risk. And sometimes I risk more than that in my trades, all right? I mean, I've risked up over $1,500 in some of my day trades, and that's still a lot of money, okay? Because you don't know the trade's going to work until it sets up and you're out. So it, it, my whole idea, the whole philosophy is I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, ideally. It doesn't mean I'm going to be in it all day. Big moves on the day, just like you saw in the morning. Early confirmation of the bias, okay? And we're looking at the shorts, for example, first. Early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, that very important period. And precise entries with follow through on the one minute chart and a good risk to reward. All right. And again, you're looking to get in and get out and put the stop. I'm really analyzing a much, much bigger time frame like I did with the spy. And I'm looking at the overall thing and I'm saying, okay, what's the directional bias for this gap going to go? 
All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And that is what I'm trying to go with. I'm trying to go with those people. And Amazon was a great example of that, even though it was an option. Institutions are buying Amazon. I mean, look at the stock. I'm also looking to make entry decisions then on a tiny time frame. Why? Because I am one individual and only have one account. So I think like a professional trader and an institutional trader that has a fun when I'm looking at it and saying, okay, where do I think this baby's going to go? But then I'm honing it down to work within my own framework as an individual, as one person, all right, to take the trade in a minuscule time frame to get in and to get out and maneuver myself on a one minute chart very, very quickly in and out and put the stop. So I'm using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, and that allows for accuracy in the direction with the institutions, but then I'm using the one minute chart to take my entries for the good risk to reward with accuracy, and I can also bulk up on size and maneuver around in and out very quickly too. Because again, I'm just looking to play that boom, that one move, 50 cents, a dollar, 75 cents, 90 cents, whatever it is. Any questions so far? Now, how many gas per week? I always get this question too. Earnings season, you know, we're going to get a lot. Three to five gaps per day or more. And again, I'm just talking about the shorts. If you're looking at both directions, it'd be double that. In non-earnings seasons, then three to five a week. There might be one day where there's no trades. That's okay. Then you don't trade. A quality gap is one that rates high, though, enough to trade based on the 26-point rating system. I'm looking for 20 points or more in everything I do. I don't have to have a perfect score. 20 or more is the cutoff for me to do the trade itself, all right? And I'm looking to short stocks that gap down if they rate 20 points or more, and I'm looking to buy stocks that gap up if they rate 20 points or more, bullishly. So success for me is following the system, following the structure, not skipping it, being disciplined in what I'm doing. It's like if you were a pilot or a doctor and you go through and you're gonna perform surgery on somebody, you would have a checklist. The checklist helps you writing it down. Like I actually write it down with a pen. I actually have a notebook next to me. I actually write like I'm very old fashioned with that. It's the way that I teach the class too. You take notes, you listen to what I'm saying, you think it through. There's something about writing down goals, writing down a targets, writing down support, writing down resistance with a pen and a paper, not just having your head. It makes it more real for you. Writing down the amount of money you want to make, writing down the amount of money you're going to risk. Um, all uh, writing down the number of trades you want to take per day. Uh, it forces you to do it and stick to it. It's like a plan of action. And everyone that puts money in the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. And I think everyone that's professional does. And they definitely have a foundation for taking their trades. And we were talking about the points earlier. Why do they work? Because of the price action. I'm going with the momentum with it, not against it. In other words, I'm taking entries and trades with the momentum. I'm not taking entries into pullbacks. I'm not saying, oh, the stock's pulling back. Boom. No, I'm going with it. Okay. It's, this is, it's like, it's so common sense, but this is not the way that most traders think. The way that I think is so practical. However, it is so unusual for a trader to think the way that I do, but it is one of the main reasons for my success. You want to buy something where the price is moving higher. You don't want to buy something when it's dipping down. If the price is dropping, don't, don't, don't. You don't want to buy it when the price is dropping. You want to buy it as it's rising. You want to see the buying coming into it. You want to see a lift. Just the same way with shorts, but I'm talking about buying now because I think it's easier to understand. I'm looking at the daily chart when I'm figuring out the points in the gap, okay? It's the gap, the gap, the gap overall. And it's a real indication as a trend in a stock, particularly for the day. Now, if you're looking for a, an option trade, you might be reading it farther out, but I'm really looking for the, for the day trade. So the price read on the daily chart tells you everything you need to know about who's controlling the stock and in what direction. The control, if you're having a movement coming down, is not up, all right? You must get the direction right in the daily chart if you want to make money trading. Somebody sent me an article the other day about someone, <coughs> excuse me, as you know, I'm talking on TV, or if you don't, I'm telling you I, I've been. And somebody sent me an article of someone that talks about the market. It's someone that's on TV. And the person was telling people to buy stocks when the price was dropping. I 
think that's the most craziest thing I've ever heard. But that is how most people tell people to do stuff. And that is how most educational places actually even teach people to do stuff. The biggest moves and the most money you will ever, ever, ever make is playing with momentum. And that does not mean going against the price. Now just think about it. If I interviewed a bum on the street and I told him, um, actually, hold on, let me pull up my charts just one second here to show you. Hold on here. Can everybody see the chart? I'm going to pull up the supply. <laughs> I think we're doing okay with time here. If I asked a bum on the street what to do with the overall market here, I'm looking at the SPY. Okay, the S&P 500 here is the SPY ETF. If I asked a bum on the street where this chart would go or what to do, let's say I asked the bum on the street Well, let's use this one here. So this was a gap up. Stock closed here is the 27, boom. Gapped up here in the 28th. I think this was the week of Thanksgiving. Anyways, if I asked the bum in the street, if the spiders were at 260, 261, I'm just gonna use an easy number here, that, and, and, the, and the market started rallying in the day. Do, do, do. Say the market started rallying up, and I asked the bum in the street what to do. Do you, I said, do you, I would say to the bum, do you wanna buy the spy? The stock is rising. He would say yes. Now, if it was the day it was falling, and an interview were bum on the street, and the day the market's falling, 12-4, a market fell, gapped up and fell. This day here, market's dropping, 266. I said, you want to buy the market here? Price is dropping. Or even this day here, price is dropping. He would say, no, I don't think you should do that, Melissa. Let's say he's watching the chart and it's going red. It's red, red, red. The bum is not going to say buy it. The bum's going to say, oh my God, this is scary, Melissa. Crap, don't buy that, Melissa. So here he would say, buy it, Melissa. He, here he would say, I'm scared. No, don't buy it. Don't do it, Melissa. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Now, this is the eight pair moving average here in the black line. And yes, the market did hold a support, but you would never would have been able to predict that. Never in a million years. As long as you live, you would never be able to predict this would hold. You would never be able to predict this would hold. And you would never be able to predict this will hold, which didn't. Market came in here and support broke it. This you can predict. This you can predict. And this you can predict, and I did. <laughs> so, you know, this was last Thursday. I saw we go, do. Now, it doesn't mean that these gaps are going to hold forever in a day. Obviously, we're talking about day trades, but you could have done these as long-term trades. But do you get what I'm saying here? You want to buy the momentum in the market. You want to go with it. Same thing here in the GME. I'm just going to quickly show you this, and I'll go back to the uh, thing. Now, I didn't do this today. I kind of wish I had. Um, but anyways, this fell and followed through from Friday in a massive way today and went to a dream number, 17. But do you see here, the follow through here, where is the momentum going for the amazing gap that happened Friday? Down. It's, con it's going down. So the momentum is down. So you're playing with the momentum. You want to go with it. It is such a common sense way to trade, but it, I tell you, people, it is so difficult for people. Unless you come and learn my system, you won't get why that works, and you would be scared to take the trade. And I got to be honest with you, there were a lot of people that did not capitalize on that market call I made, or even this Amazon call I made, because I called Amazon, like I said, that option. People didn't do it. They didn't think it was going to work. They were very upset that they did not do this trade. And this stock today went up almost 40 points through the strike if you held it to today, which, you know, not everybody did, but a couple people did. Sorry, my phone is ringing. I say a bum on the street, but it's a good, it's a good, 
you know, there, there's actually a lot of homeless people around where I live, but, you know, in New York. But I will tell you, though, that it's the idea that you don't have to know that much to know that what I'm saying makes actually perfect sense. But yet it is very, it is just not the way that traders think. And so it becomes problematic for them. And they often make mistakes and miss huge, massive, big moves like the market in the last two weeks, like the market last year. You know, I mean, every time I was on TV, people said, well, can the market go higher? Yes. Can the market go higher? Yes. Is it too extended? No. I mean, I, I, I feel like a broken record. Anyways, I think that you've got to get in early, 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 early in an ideal world if you can. And, and again, if you live in the West Coast or somewhere across the world, you know, it could be a different time. For me, 9.30 a.m. is a good time in the morning in New York. But, you know, you get in, you get out, you get on with your day. So what makes it about gaps and makes them so profitable? Exactly what I just said. Exactly 100% what I just said. The fact that it's movement, it's money that's coming in, that's pushing it. It's pushing it up or it's pushing it down. Okay, because you have shorting too. You have selling action. Selling action creates drop-offs, creates threat. It's the large institutions that move stocks. Okay? So gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. And this is also actually why gap fills don't work, people. I'm not going to get into that today, but I'm telling you that's why they don't work. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you just play it. Gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency. This an action is being forced by participants of the stock, and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money, and that is how you are going to make money trading. And it will be very difficult for you to make money if you don't have that with you. It'll be hard for you to make money if you don't have institutional money moving stuff. All right? So you've really got to be very specific with what you're picking and very specific with what you're doing. Now let's look at the trade from last week. GME, closed here, gap down. Where was the day trade in this? Boom. And again, I don't even hold this for that long, but took it, got out, boom. Went a little bit more here in the morning, rallied up. You could have done it later in the day or late morning, I should say, into 1030. But I just did one, boom, boom, in and out of this. I didn't even hold this to 18. And it did go and break 18, actually went to 17, 1775 here in the morning. I got out pretty quick, though. Entry, 1837. Number of shares, 5,000. Good price point. That's perfectly fine. Exit, 1817. Total profit, $1,200. Time in trade, less than 10 minutes. It did go to a bigger number. I could have made more. I just got out really quick. And why? Mark was very bullish Friday, which I saw. But still, this worked. So this fell here and fell all day, despite the bullish market. And that's another nice thing about trading gaps. I don't need the market with me for my shorts to work. I don't have to have a falling market to short my gaps. And I and the same thing when flip side for the longs. And all, part of that is because I'm in and out quick. And I'm really looking at the pre-market data when I'm analyzing it. So anyways, trading with size is something that takes some skill. But I think you start out as a beginner. You can work out to an intermediate. Become an advanced trader. Advanced trader is, you know, around that $1,000 mark, even over 500 to me is advanced. And that's your risk. So sometimes the quantity will be 2,000. Sometimes it'll be 5,000. I never know my stop. Stop could be 50 cents. Stop could be 10, all right? But your risk amount per trade should be about the same in every trade you take. And you should be consistent with that at least for the first week, the first month. I'm not saying you can't bump it up over time, but you gotta give yourself a couple of weeks, I'd say, to stay with one lot size of amount that you're gonna trade. But honestly, one or two good trades can make your whole month. And you're gonna have a couple losses. You're gonna have a couple losses in a month's time, but you should have way more gains than losses. And I always use an average of 75 to 80%. It depends on where I add as far as the busy times in the year. But I would say out of every 10 trades I call, seven and a half work, two and a half don't work to be specific. So that's why I use stops. Again, if you want to make $1,000 a day, you got to risk that per trade. You, if your weekly goal is 5000 and you make three grand in one trade, you're almost there. So you can be start to be careful. 
People always ask me about buying power margin. This is not for options. What do you need for day trading? At least 100000 to be able to take size in this. Some are a little bit more expensive. Uh, like Disney, for example, is over 100 price points. Walmart, okay, those stocks like that, you might need a little bit more. In a prop account, that'd be ten grand. In a retail account, twenty five thousand. Four to one margin, ten to one margin. Different types of accounts, which you can ask me, and I can talk to you more about later. Any questions? So you know, minimum account size for a prop trading account is really twenty five hundred. But the more you have, the more you can make. Any questions so far? Again, I was saying it's about the way that your brain functions. Once you get in a habit of doing it, or even a habit of listening to me do it, I really think it helps you. Do it, do it, do it, and it, you just get used to doing it. And, and then it's not so big of a deal. You've gotta get in the habit of doing it, and that's why I tell people, listen, if you don't have the money to risk $1,000 a trade, it doesn't mean you should wait until you do. The sooner you start, the better you're gonna do, because you're training yourself to see the setup, see the gaps, take the trades, make whatever money you can until you build your account up to be able to risk more, you're training yourself, you're training your brain, you're training your brain in the class when you're doing it. And I do allow one free retake of the class and I encourage people to retake the class because you go through the whole class once, you wanna do it again, come back in a month, you can do it one time for free. And I think that that is important to train yourself. Also being in the room with me helps to train yourself over and over. And we were talking about this earlier as far as the benefits of trading gaps as a strategy and one of the reasons I like it is because you just don't have to work 40 hours a week. You just don't have to. There might be days I trade to the close but it's rare and usually if I am I'm, I'm having a hard day so I prefer not to no matter what. Point being that I work for myself and I can decide the days I trade. I can decide the days I don't trade. I can decide how many trades a day I take. I can decide my own risk. And you could cut off yourself every day at 10 o'clock and quit trading. Whether you're up or down, however much you're up or down, you could just say, boom, I'm done at 10. Set an alarm to go off and be done. It's the idea that you are just grabbing that move. Boom, 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 all right? So I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day, which is the entry. Six different entries you'd learn in my class, and one is a later entry, but most of the ones I do are in the morning. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis, okay, on a very advanced level. And that's what you would come and learn with me. So a checklist is invaluable. It tells you what to train and what to look for, okay? Any questions? I've been talking about the checklist on and on and on here all day today, and I really think it's important. It helps you be disciplined, having a notebook next to you. And we did talk about the options. If you wanna do options, I have an options letter, which I'll talk about at the end, you can sign up for, uh, but it's really all using my system. You're looking for big momentum moves. What I said earlier was very important. You wanna trade with momentum if you wanna make money. You don't wanna pull, get pull-ins to do it. You never can be certain to predict what support levels are gonna hold. So something might set up, fail, drop, break, and you might be down, 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 down before it turns around again. And if you're day trading, you've got a set period of the day where you gotta get in and you gotta get out. You don't have a lot of time to mess around on day trades. And in options, you don't either because every day you lose time value. The quick profits are what I like to do. That is also why I like to, to trade gaps, not just the fast moves. And does anyone have any questions? Earnings season starts, like I said, this week. AA reports this week. Goldman is tomorrow morning. Uh, the market will be very interesting to see where we open tomorrow. I just can't wait to see. But if you'd like a trial to the room, you can email me at melissatthestockswish.com. Kathy can put my email in there. But I would tell you, if you want to learn how to trade, you, you got two choices. A, teach yourself. And that's not on a demo, fake trading, creating a system. You got to do it with real money or you're never going to know if it works. Or B, you come and you learn from someone, like me or somebody else. But I would not waste years and years of your life paying for multiple classes over and over again and really not getting anywhere with it. My class does cost $5,500, which, you know, which is a decent amount of money, but it teaches you how to trade. So the value is there for the cost of my course. 
you will absolutely learn something. And it's it's really, you're either all in and you're going to do it, or you're not. And, and by all in, I don't mean hours and hours of your time or day. I mean the seriousness that you were committed to doing it, and you're going to make yourself successful. You're going to do what's required. You're going to listen to me. You're going to learn. I think it's all about conviction. And it really starts with you, and it's whether or not you have conviction in your own self that you think you can make money in the market. I mean, I, honestly, what I said earlier about common sense was so practical. And, and if you have some of these bad thoughts or habits from past things, like just think about what I said tonight. It is very possible to make money in the market. I mean, I live in New York. You have no idea how many wealthy people live here. I mean, you know, a lot of people are invested in the market. A lot of people have made so much money in the last year. I can't tell you how many people are reaching out to me like crazy birds asking me about where to put the money for this year in strong stocks because of the market. I mean, you know, it's just you got to be in this market and to take advantage of it. Sitting on the sidelines isn't going to do you any good at all. And uh, trust me when I say there are people making lots and lots of money in the market. It is not beyond the realm of possibility. One guy on Friday made $14,000 in the options trades I called in one day. And he held two of them into, the, into today. So he did benefit from two of the bigger moves up. Netflix was the one. You know, I mean, you just have to take it seriously. And serious is not just fly by 90 it. It means you're going to learn it. You're going to have conviction. You're going to do it. And trust me when I say you're smart enough to do this. Uh, you know, you are. It's just you have to pay attention. But you only have to be there for 30 minutes. So earning season is the time. It's the time to make money. And I'm teaching people how to trade. And I, I'm just... I mean, I'm just, it's like so incredible that people are making so much money with me. I mean, it is, I, I, I have never, when I started out trading 10 years ago, I never in my life thought I'd ever teach people at all. And then when I started the business, I really just didn't know how many people I'd ever teach. And the fact that people are like, just, you know, sending me all these amazing emails, I mean, it makes me feel good. If, if you make money, I make money. We're not, that's great. I'm not against you. We're together. I mean, if we all took the same direction in the trades, it's all good, you know? So I'm happy when people are extremely successful. Uh, very, very happy, all right? So I will teach you how to make money in the market. I'll teach you how to make money in gaps. I'm going to teach you the correct way to play gaps. And I'm going to teach you how to get conviction in your trading and see how the market can pay you. So empower yourself today. Remember, trading is an individual thing. I'm your mentor if you come to me. You have to take responsibility yourself. To be there, show up, wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, have breakfast, be ready to go. You rate the gaps with me. I teach you how to do it. You rate them, I rate them. We go over the ratings together. If I say this gap rates 20 points, make sure you get the same rating. All right? Any questions? Or Kathy put my email in. Anyways, if you'd like to learn my system, the class is this weekend. It's a complete system. Learn how to trade gaps. 20th and 21st the bearish class. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at our professional bearish caps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5. $54.99 is the price. Email me if you want to sign up. Forms are not online. You have to email me for the forms. If you want to do the trends course too, you save $500. Cost for both is $59.99. If you want to do options, I suggest this or swing trades, which is a trends course. It's normally a thousand bucks. If you pay for them both together, you can do them both. Save $500. If you want to just sign up for the options letter, it's $29.99 for the entire year. So you'd get almost the whole year if you signed up today. It'd be through January 16th, uh, 2019. So a year's worth of the letter. You would have got all the trades I called last week. And the trades are just emailed to you in live time. You got to watch your trades when you're up. You don't want to miss the next call. And I still think the market's higher. Here, if we have some time, we'll look at the chart. This was a, a testimonial from Lewis who did very well. And let me just see if there's any questions. Does anyone have any questions at all about anything here before I pull up the market quickly? Actually, Galahad, is there anything that's gapping tonight? Coleman isn't until the morning. Is anything gapping tonight? We could look at a gap. Write it in the room and let me know. The Golden Gap course, Bullish and Bearish, if you want to do them both, pay for them both together. Cost is $7,999. Savings is $2,999. The classes are not the same. I don't have the dates yet for the bullish class, but if you sign up for both of them together, you save almost three grand. If you want to learn how to do longs and shorts, and I do think the bullish class is imperative for some of the trades this year, particularly the options. I've been calling mostly 
mostly longs for the options letter, quite frankly, with the market. And then you learn how to do both. Rohan, as far as taking options trades, it's whatever the broker requires for you to open up an options account. I think 2000 is a minimum at most places, but I think there's some places that will open up an account with $500. But your risk, Rohan, on an options account will depend on the size of your account. For example, say you open up an account, an options account with two grand. Well, you're not gonna risk two grand in one trade. That would be silliness, okay? But for example, uh, you know, if you risked two hundred dollars and made a thousand, then you could take a two thousand dollar account and make, you know, it would be up to three thousand. Then the next trade you could risk three hundred. Then you make money in that one and you bump it up. So you could start with a small account and build it, but you'd have to leave the profit sit in the account every time you got out. Does that make sense? You can you can just email or call any broker at all in the world and find out. I know 2000 is typical of the minimum, but I think some places, uh, you know, will do 500, but I can't tell you what. Let's quickly look here at the SPY. Is there anything down tonight here? Because, you know, I like to look at the shorts. Is anything gapping down at all? CSX? Okay, I'm not going to rate this, but let's just look at it. <laughs> this is earnings, yeah. So I don't think this is going to be here tomorrow. I think it's going to be different. I don't know if the difference is going to be up or the difference is going to be down more. I do not think we open here tomorrow morning. It is gapping down currently. This is definitely a watch. I definitely will rate it, but I, I don't see any point in rating it here because I don't think it's going to open here. It's going to look much different than this tomorrow morning, and I don't know what that is. Low in here, boom, 57.20. So it got down to this point here just a little bit ago at 4. So this is a watch. CSX for tomorrow. It's a watch. And again, if you want to try out of the room, just email me for the rest of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Short week here because of the holiday, but still probably going to be a really good week. And Goldman, I can't wait to see what this does. This is going to be extremely interesting. I'll give you one quickly, quickly thing here. Again, it says report until tomorrow morning, but I will tell you this. If this stock gaps up over the high tomorrow morning, it's going to fly like a bird. <laughs> I don't know if it gaps up or gaps down, but I tell you right now, if it hits over the previous high, which was 262, 262.13-ish, uh, if that stock gaps up tomorrow over that high, it will fly like anybody's business, unless it goes up Unless it goes to some insane, crazy, crazy, crazy number, which it could on the gap. But if it gaps up, it's not going to just be like a, eh. I don't think this is going to be a dud. I think Goldman has a big move tomorrow. I don't know if it's up or down, and I think it has a big move. So that's my two cents on that. So I will be watching this tomorrow for possible new option call. And this I will be watching too. And then we'll see what else we get. Any questions from anyone else? Think about what I said today. It was a good example with the bum on the street, but it was a point where you could take someone that doesn't know anything about trading at all, it doesn't have any bad habits and didn't learn any crazy things, and they would never be buying something when the price is dipping, okay? So think about what I said. You wanna go with momentum. All right, listen, have a great night, everyone. Email me with questions. If you want to sign up for the class, email me. I'll send you the forms. I think it's going to be a great year. I'm very excited. I'm just still getting over a cold, uh, but I feel good. And uh, back in the room tomorrow morning, and I'm just going to see what we get. Strong, strong week. Thank you, Bethelina. Very great. Listen, thanks for following me, everybody, and go to YouTube. You're welcome. Thanks, Kathy.